Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today let's talk about fall fishing and how to be successful throughout the whole fall season. I know it can be a little bit challenging because the bass seem to be scattered and they're hard to find sometimes, but if you follow the tips I'm about to give you, it's going to be a lot easier for you. So let's start off with the forage. Right now the bass, when, it, when they get into the fall season, they're, getting, they're feeding up, <clears throat> getting ready for the winter. So they're chasing down whatever available forage they have. And that could be, for the most part, is bait fish. Now, understanding the role of the bait fish, their behavior during the fall, and what they do can really help you find the bass. Because whatever the bait fish are, that's where the bass are. So take shad, for example. If you have shad in your lake or in your river, shad are pretty easy because they're very predictable. What they do is in the early, well, late summer, early fall, they're a little bit deeper out in the main lake, and as fall progresses, they move up shallow. They move into the back of bays, back of coves, move up streams, tributaries, or if you're in a river system, they move upstream. What they're doing is they're looking for oxygen-rich water with a lot of cover available that they can hide in, where they can feed, and so the bass will follow them. So it's pretty, pretty predictable that the bass will be up shallow about mid-fall, and then they reverse that process. The shad start to move back out, move out deeper as you get closer to winter, and the bass will follow them on out. So understanding that shad behavior really helps you find the bass. However, what if you know you're looking at your depth finder and you see these blips, you know, big balls of bait fish and stuff? How can you tell if it's shad? Well, let me give you a secret. It doesn't matter. Okay. Really, it doesn't matter. Whether it's shad or some other form of bait fish, if it's some kind of bait fish, the bass will be there. So this also is true. If your lake doesn't have shad, understand what the predominantly, uh, predominant bait fish are in that lake. For example, if it's perch or if it's gobies or bluegill, that sort of thing, they're gonna go after them and feed on them. So understand how those behave. So for example, perch. Perch, towards the middle of fall, and towards the end of fall, the perch will begin to school up in these big balls of, of schools, and they'll be out a little bit off, offshore, relating near to, near to cover or near structure, and the bass will get up underneath them and feed on them. Knowing that will help you find the bass. Bluegill like to get up shallow and get up in those weeds and such, and, and that's where the bass will go to follow them. So find the bait fish, find the bass. Now, let's take a little bit in more consideration. Let's think about cover. Cover is the form of anything that's not part of the bottom structure. So weeds, for example, there's really three different types. There's three, there's weeds, there's rocky cover, and then there's wood. So let's start with weeds. Weeds, <clears throat> what the bass like to do, or the bait fish will like to do, is get up in those weeds, and it helps them hide from the predators, and helps them feed because it attracts insects and zooplankton, and that's what the bait fish feed on. And the weeds in the end of summer, in the beginning of fall are very abundant and really thick in, in a lot of lakes. And that's where the that's why one of the reasons why the bait fish will be up shallow. Now as fall progresses and the water temperature begins to drop, the weeds start to die off in the shallow areas first and progressively deeper and deeper. Well as they die, the weeds consume oxygen. Well that's not what the bait fish want. Like I said earlier, they want oxygen rich water. So they'll move away from that. If you find dead and dying weeds in the fall, don't fish it because Chances are there's not going to be a lot of fish in there. Move out deeper till you find the greener weeds, and that's where you're going to find the bait fish. Until progressively towards the middle to end of fall, you're fishing the outside weed lines in 10 to 20 feet of water, and that actually concentrates a lot of fish too. So you can really find good concentrations of bass on these outside weed lines because that's where they're feeding on the bait fish towards the middle and into fall. Now, what if your lake doesn't have a lot of weeds? Well, like I said, there's two other types of cover available. There's rock and there's wood. So let's talk about rock. Rock, for example, is, you know, riprap on faces of dams or they can be seawalls. Anything that's made out of like a hard, rocky surface could be chunk rock on a flat, that sort of thing. Rock. Uh, algae will grow on rocks, and that att attracts the bait fish to feed on it. And of course, like I said, where the bait fish are, that's where the bass are. So rocks and riprap can be really good areas to find fish, especially in the fall, 
because that's again where the bass are going to be feeding on those bait fish. Wood is the same sort of thing. Wood is like dock pilings or bridge pilings, docks. They can be wood, you know, laydowns or logs in, on the bottom of the lake. Again, it's organic compound. Algae grows on it. Same, same thing there. You're going to find bait fish in those areas. So while you're looking in the fall, when you're moving from <clears throat> deep from summer, shallow mid-fall, and then back to deep again, look for these types of cover to find, well, that's where the bass will be staging along, either moving up shallow or moving back out deep. That's where they're gonna be hanging out on as fall progresses. Now let's talk a little bit about structure because we're talking about different depths. Structure is really what are gonna be the main highways where these fish are going to be anytime during the season. Structure comes in the form of points, secondary points, which secondary points are those points that are inside of coves and bays. They're gonna be flats, there'll be uh, channels, streams, creek channels, and that sort of thing. When, uh, the bat, when the bait fish move up shallow, they're gonna be up on those flats, not deep all the way to the back of flats, but they'll be towards the edge of them near deeper water. This is why I look to look, like to look for creeks and channels that go in these, in these bays because you get a nice swing, channel swing goes up towards the, the shoreline, you're gonna get this steep drop from shallow to deep. And that's a prime area where you can find these fish that are stacking up in that area or on the inside of those swings where you've got a shallow, kind of a more of a flat. If you can find cover such as stumps or, or chunk rock, man, I'm going to slap you if you don't fish those areas because those are going to be very, very productive. So look for those areas back in those, ba those bays and coves. Um, and then as, per, as the fall progresses and gets colder and colder, again, Look a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper channels. Look for those, those rock piles and those humps and ledges. And then as you get towards the end of fall, you're looking for steeper drops. The, the, the closer the contour lines on your GPS map, the better. Or if you're looking at a paper graph, those steeper drops is what you want to look for towards the end of fall because they have a quick access from shallow to deep and uh, they're out there towards the main lake. So that's the areas that I like to, to, to target. You, you look for the, that structure and then that cover that I just talked about uh, that's sitting on that structure and you got yourself a sweet spot. So those are what you want to look for. As for the baits to use during the fall, like I mentioned many times over, bait fish. So you need to have the baits that mimic bait fish. And there really is no other bait out there that does a better job of mim mimicking bait fish than a crankbait. So I essentially use three different types of crankbaits during the fall. One of them is a lipless crankbait. This I'll use throughout the fall, but I'll use it a little bit differently in the early part of the fall into the mid-fall when the fish are shallow. I like to use them uh, in two different ways. One, I will bring it back quickly, rapidly, right over the tops of the weeds and right along docks and pilings. And you know, I want it, I want it moving fast because the activity level is, is, is up, the metabolism is up, bait fish are moving quickly. I'll also bring it along the outside weed lines and the in the deeper creeks and drops. What I'll do is I'll throw it out there and let it drop down a little bit down deeper. You can, that's the nice thing about these baits is you can control the depth. And I'll bring it along the bring it, bring it along those bring <coughs> excuse me bring it along those edges a little bit slower, and hopefully those bass will come out and ambush those baits. There you go. I know I got him held weird, but that plus crankbait. Now, as you get from the middle of the fall towards the late part of the fall, the lipless crankbaits, I'll change them up a little bit. Water temperatures are cooling. The activity level is beginning to, to, to die down. So what I'll do then is I like to use a, a drop retrieve. As, as the fish are getting deeper, I like to throw it out there and let it drop all the way down, just straight down. It, it, it wobbles like this all the way down. Let it fall. Let it hit to the bottom and then 
rip it up off the bottom and let it fall back down. A lot of bait fish are dying during this time of the year, so you're mimicking that action, which is triggering that bite. So let it fall all the way down and just rip it up off the bottom on those main structure areas that I talked about earlier. And if, you, if the bass are there, they're gonna smack it. Now, there's two different deep dive crankbaits that I like to use. In the early part of the fall, I'll use a deep dive crankbait that has a wide lip. The wide lips are great because what they do is they give it a lot of action. The, the, the bait is lots of sachet, moving around, lots of vibration, causes quite a bit of commotion. The activity level is up during this time of year, into summer, into early fall. So that's what I want. I want to bounce it off things and ricocheting and just being really erratic and causing a lot of commotion. And, it, and you can get a lot of bites that way. Try to knock it off dock pilings or off those uh, chunk rock on those flats. As you get from mid-fall to late fall, then I move to a narrow bait, a narrow, a, a narrow bell. So it has a much tighter action. It's not as pronounced. It doesn't make as much commotion. Again, everything's beginning to simmer down. There's not as much action going on, so you're mimicking that action. You're basically matching the activity level of bait fish. But it still dives down to the same depths, if not deeper, because the fish are deeper. And that's what I want it to do, is get down there, maybe ricochet every now and then, but not a ton of commotion. Colors for these baits is really simple. For the lipless crankbaits, I'm using a chrome with a black back or a chrome with a blue back. And with the other crankbaits, Fire Tiger. You just can't go wrong with Fire Tiger. Now, I'm not saying other colors don't work, they do, but if I were fishing a lake that I'd never fished on before and I'm anywhere in the country, I, during the fall, I'd be reaching for a Fire Tiger bait because it's just, it's a, it's a gimme. It works really well. Some people like to use Sexy Shad, some other colors, but Fire Tiger is a go-to go color for me. Another bait that I like to use during the fall is spinner bait. Spinner bait, it does uh, mimic a bait fish. So during the early part of the fall, I'm bringing it back really fast. I like to burn it across the tops of weeds. I like to bulge the surface, get that reaction strike. <laughs> As the fall progresses and it gets uh, mid-fall to late fall, or if these fronts come through and the fish are being really lethargic, then I like to slow roll it along the outside of these weed lines, especially when they're getting out, when the weeds have died and they're out there from 10 to 15 feet, 10 to 20 feet deep on those weed lines. Let it flutter all the way down, just like you did with that lipless crankbait. Let it fall straight down. A lot of times you get bit during that fall. Let it hit the bottom and then just slow crank it right along the bottom of those weed lines. And a lot of times you'll get bit, especially if the fish are really lethargic, maybe a front came through. Um, they Sometimes they just smash it. Man, they'll just crash that, that spinner bait. Simply just, just use a white or whiter chartreuse with the trailer on it. And I like to have you know, just gold blades to give a little bit of a vibration. Another bait that I like to use is a jerk bait. And I just use two different types. In the early fall when they're shallow, Early to mid fall when they're shallow, I use like a Rapala number 11. It's a floater diver. It only goes a couple feet deep. I like to just use it as a regular jerk bait, giving it hard jerks, giving it a couple pauses in between. Random, it doesn't matter. You can do a three, 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 let it pause for five seconds, three, 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 let it pause, or three, two, or I think, you know, one, two, and let it pause, or one, let it pause, whatever. It, it's just random, it doesn't really matter. Just give it a little bit of erratic action. And then as you get more into the deeper, deeper part of fall, now you're using deeper diving suspending crankbaits that get down to 10 feet or more. And same action, but not as hard, not as pronounced. Maybe one jerk and just let it sit and let the pauses last longer in between. And those are the, those, that's the retrieve that works really well with these minnow type crankbaits. <clears throat> so another bait I like to use throughout the fall is a topwater bait. Namely like a popper or a chugger, something that looks like an injured minnow that sits on the surface, it looks like a little minnow, and you just give it a couple little pops and let it sit. Yeah, look at you, you're alert, man. 
won't hit you. <sighs> Look at the belly on that dude. Look at that, he has been feeding. <laughs> Eat that popar. Top water fishing, man, it is so much fun. Works really well during the fall, basically any time during the fall, but especially if you see bass that are popping bait fish on the surface. If, you, if they're within casting distance and you can throw that into the fray and just give it a couple pops, you're gonna get whacked, boom, really quick. So using a popper can be a really effective way of catching fish during the fall. Anyway, I hope those tips help. You follow those, I, I trust, trust me, you're gonna catch a lot of fish this fall. Use them, go out there, catch a bunch of fish, have a lot of fun. For more tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.